Good morning, New Beginnings. Good morning. Welcome to worship and a special uh, welcome to all the mothers. Happy Mother's Day to everybody who's joining us here in person, everybody who's joining us online. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you all. We're excited to worship, to, to sing, and to celebrate. Excuse me. Um, and I'm going to invite Vic DeMagno to come forward. He's going to be our liturgist and our worship leader this morning. And he's going to come call us into worship. Come on up. Please stand as you are able. Please join me in our course of worship. Lord, we come before you today looking at all we are missing. Yes. Yet you, you are enough. Lord, we see all the struggle and war in this world. Lord, let, let us, us have faith, faith in, in you. you. Lord, we ask that you help us see just how much you provide for us when we have faith in you. Lord, you are, you good, are good all the time, all time, and, and all, all the time, time you, you are, are good. good. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing hymn number 133. Leaning on the everlasting hands. Yes. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Please be seated. Join me in our opening prayer. Lord of us all, we thank, we thank you, you for, for the women, women in our lives, the ones, the ones who are or have, have been, been our mothers, mothers the, the ones, ones who have been, been like mothers, and the ones, and the ones that have cared and loved us, loved us without, without any title, title at all. We thank, we thank you, Lord, Lord, that your, your spirit of love has shown, has shown us what love looks, looks like. And that, and that we, we have, have those in our midst that have, have shared that love, love with, with us. We pray, we pray this in the name of the Spirit of the, of the Living God. God. Amen. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer with one another where we lift up our praises and our prayers. And we first off want to lift up... Uh, 
the praises of all of our mothers, right? Of all of the mothers that are with us. So we lift them up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Do we have other prayer requests that we'd like to lift up? Joys and concerns? Yeah. I'll start in the very back and I'll, I'll make my way forward. Got yellow microphone on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I have a joy. Uh, it's my sister's uh, birthday, Gloria. So I'm glad she's still here. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. I, I have, we've experienced some miracles this last week. Um, they were afraid that I had a, a very aggressive kind of cancer that was an anomaly inside of another cancer. And they tested, the geneticists thought that it would affect everyone in our family. And uh, he tested, or she tested, over 30 types of cancer. And they all came back negative. Oh, praise so God. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And the second miracle, they said it would take about six months for my cut that went from here down um, to heal. And it healed in the last two weeks. It's just totally closed up. Wow. Yeah. So. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Oh, you have more? No? All right. That's wonderful news. Hey, we'll keep it coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Come back over here. I want to pray for my son for finals week at San Bernardino Valley College and for all the students studying for their finals. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I want to lift up Lonnie, who uh, continues to go through physical therapy. She's at home, but she's uh, continuing therapy regularly. And um, we're just praying that she can actually heal from this and, and get back on her feet again. So we're lifting her up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All right. Let us gather together in prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have given us. Lord, as we breathe deeply, Lord, we thank you that your spirit is among us. That your spirit is with us. That your spirit loves us, Lord, and leads us. Sometimes it is hard to see exactly where you are but Lord you are always with us so we ask Lord that your spirit enter into our hearts and minds 
that we experience your love this day, Lord, that we experience your comfort. For, Lord, you love us more than anyone, more than anything. It's hard to imagine a creator of all things loving us that much. So we thank you, Lord. We lift your name high today. We honor it. We know, Lord, that you are with us, that you are amongst us, Lord, and that your spirit teaches us and leads us to love one another, to care for one another, to hold one another when things are difficult, to carry the burden, Lord, when things are not going our way, to be there for one another, to show up in the lives of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, that is the heart of who you are. You are love. Lord, teach us to love. Help us be the hands and feet of love. Lord, help us transform one another and the lives around us with love. That is ultimately who you are. Lord, help us to be that with you. Help us to change the lives of this world. For Lord, there is so much outside of love. There is so much hate and discrimination and war and violence and death. But you call us to be something else, Lord. You call us that through your spirit, Lord, that we can be something beyond that. So we ask your help this day to experience your love once again and to move with love in this world just as your son Jesus Christ did. Let us pray the prayer that he taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading is found in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Elisha and the widow's oil. Now the wife of a member of the company of prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, but a creditor has come to take my two children as slaves. Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She answered, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. He said, Go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not just a few. Then go in. Shut the door behind you and your children and start pouring into all these vessels. When it is full, set it aside. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her children. They kept bringing vessels to her and she kept pouring. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. But he said to her, There are no more. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your children can live on the rest. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank be to God. Amen. I have the fortune of spending some time at the preschool and uh, it's amazing to see what happens when uh, the parents leave, you know? There's that, the, the, the moments right before when they're just crying and sobbing and they're going, I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave you and the parents going, I know, it's going to be okay and you know, they're comforting their child and, and the child is crying and finally the, the teacher gets them and the parent leaves and it usually takes about 30 seconds. Once they're used to it, maybe less. 
And then they're just playing, right? And they're moved on. It's kind of like uh, when you see a child who, who gets hurt way over here, you know, they fall and they scrape their knee and they know that their mom's way over there and so they just start to run to their mom and they're fine and they're fine and then as soon as they see their mom and their mom sees them, they just start to cry immediately. Right? It wasn't when the pain happened necessarily. But when they get close to the mom, when they get close to their comfort, when they get close to the one that will hold them, that is when it happens. There's also a phenomenon of, uh, especially when school starts, especially with preschoolers, we have one that did this a lot, that every Monday when she would get home, she would just be a crying mess. She would hold it together all day long. The teachers would say she was great, she was fantastic, but as soon as she got home, as soon as she was comfortable, as soon as she was safe, she just couldn't hold it together anymore. She was just a crying, weeping, yelling, screaming mess, right? It took her to hold it together all day long. But then when she was in the comfort of someone who loved her, when she was in a safe place, is when she released it all. I wonder sometimes if we give God that same kind of honor. You see, sometimes this world is a harsh place and a difficult place. And I think one of the difficulties of us using the word Father all the time with God is that we forget how loving and caring and tender and warm our God can be. That when the rest of the world is difficult and when there's so much going on that sometimes we just need somebody to hold us. We just need to be with somebody. And we don't have to always keep it together when we're with the person who loves us unconditionally. Sometimes it's okay to let it out. Like a child who's held it together for the rest of the world but waits until they're with their comfort, usually their mom, right? To just let it all go. Let the yelling and the screaming and the crying and the pain and the anger come out. Because the one that they're with will hold them and love them and care for them no matter what. It's what we miss, I think, when we don't recognize God as feminine also. We don't recognize that there's a tender and a loving care that happens with God because we just use father language and sometimes fathers aren't always that, right? Sometimes fathers uh, like to play with their kids a little bit more. Sometimes their fathers uh, bring out a, a little different thing. That's not true for every family and I'm not saying this across the board but I want to recognize that we miss something. I don't know how often we use mother language in church, how often you've heard it. Sometimes it's just once a year on Mother's Day. What a shame. In our story today, we have a, a widow who's effectively lost everything. She has her children, she has some sons, and she has nothing else, she says. I have nothing else. And she's speaking to Elijah, and Elijah, Elisha sorry, asks her, what do you have? And I love this answer. Well, first he says, what should I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she answered, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. First she thinks, I have nothing in the house. I have nothing left. I have nothing to give. I have nothing to take care of us. There is nothing left. Mm. Have you ever felt that way before? Life is hard. What do you have left? I actually have nothing left. I have no more patience. I have no more sanity. I have no more energy. 
I have no more. I'm actually at the bottom of it all. I'm actually done with this. I can't do anything else. I'm done. Except, <laughs> except maybe there's something. Maybe I have, whoop, maybe I have one jar of oil left. The reality is that that was enough for God. You see, uh, a woman in this kind of situation has no other choice but probably to have her children work. She's not allowed to work, but she did have sons, and so they would be allowed to work. And so probably before they were ready, probably before she wanted to, probably before it was needed in a normal situation, there was nothing left except for, for her children to work. This was kind of the end of the line. She had nothing left. Except one jar of oil. That's not a lot. That's not going to do it. But Elisha does this miracle. He says, go out and start getting vessels. <coughs> start getting empty ones. Borrow them. Get them from anywhere you can. Just go get as much empty things as you possibly can, okay? That's all we need. All we need are, are empty jars. Go get them from anywhere you can. So the woman shows up and finally they gather all of the empty jars and they just start to be filled. Can you imagine one after another after another? As this woman's pouring, I can only imagine her going, please, I hope we got enough empty jars. The hope turns into, I wonder how long this will last as she fills up another. And as it keeps going and fills up another. And as she keeps going, this is, this is a miracle. It doesn't make any sense. I, I had one. I had basically nothing left. There was nothing for me to do. I don't know if you've ever been that low before in your life. I bet we can imagine a time when you have felt like there is nothing left. Or things like everything has gone wrong for me. Right now especially everything has gone wrong for me. Not some things, it's everything. It's this feeling of nothing is going to be okay. And yet Elisha asked her, what can I do for you? And what do you have in this house? And her first thought is nothing. And her second thought is, well, I have one thing. <laughs> I've got one thing left. And Elijah makes that one thing, well, God, Elijah's the prophet. He's just a mouthpiece. God makes that one thing into everything and makes it enough. Now, I want to recognize that this never happens alone. This never happens alone. This story doesn't happen with Elijah showing up and saying, I'm going to come, can I come stay with you? And I'm not just going to be a burden on you, but I'm also going to help you, that I'm going to come be with you. I want to recognize that, that oftentimes our stories don't happen where we just say, I went into a room by myself and I just started pouring oil and, and everything worked out. There's often people who come and step in, who make a phone call, who who show up in our lives, who come and help and in even the smallest ways. There's often a person that's connected with this. And the story of those who have nothing and those who are looking for everything. The challenge, folks, is that when we have nothing, we've got to just look for one thing. I have nothing left, God. And then I want you to think, except, except.
for fill in the blank. Except for that one thing that I do actually have. Except for that that is actually going well. Except for that person in my life. Except for this that's happening. You see, even when we get to the ends of the rope, even when we feel like there's nothing left, there's usually an except there. Except for that. And I want us to think about the other side. The times when we're not in despair, when we're not at the end of the rope, when things aren't going terribly wrong, when, when we don't have a shirt, when, when, when things are going pretty well, when we forget that we were in that situation in the first place. And then I want us to look around at everybody else. I want us to pay attention to who our neighbor is. Because some of our neighbors are at the end of their rope. And maybe, just maybe, we could be the exception for them. We could be the one to show up. Even if it's just with an empty jar. And maybe, just maybe, God will fill that. We'll honor that. We'll recognize that we're showing up for somebody else. We'll move in God's abundant spirit of love. Maybe even move through us to help change someone's life. You see, maybe we can be the exception. Everything's wrong except for when we showed up once a week. When we gave that person a phone call. (coughs) When we took them to lunch. When we stepped in and gave them something that didn't make sense for us to give. Maybe we could be the exception. Maybe we could be a full jar. Or maybe we're just empty vessels. That God is ready to use when we show up for one another in love. And the third point to bring it back all the way around is that we've got to honor God with our faithfulness. That doesn't mean that when everything's going right, it also means that when everything's going wrong, sometimes we've got to let ourselves yell, scream, throw a tantrum at God, not at one another. But sometimes not everything is right. Sometimes the world is too much and we can only hold on so long in a day. But God loves us that much. God loves us unconditionally, eternally. God is willing and ready to to be in the room with us as we tantrum and as we yell at God and as we say, I have nothing left. And everything is going wrong. And how is this possible? And how could you do this to me? And sometimes, just in that conversation and in that time when God will not leave us or forsake us, it shows us just what kind of love God has for us. We can't hold it together all the time. Maybe we should give our struggles and our anger, and our despair to the one who loves us enough to hold all of that with us and to love us through it no matter what. Amen. We, um, it's now time for our uh, gifts and ties, our time of offering. There's an offering uh, in the middle. While that's happening, we also have a special video to play um, that is going to show what our Mother's Day celebration at the preschool was like.
So we get to see some of the kids and their families and uh, the wonderful time that we had this Friday. Um, so come as you feel called to give your offering and we'll also have that playing. We'll do that now. You're my sweetest addiction. You're my strongest inspiration. And I love you. It's true. There's no mountain I could not climb as long as you are mine. And I thank you for being. rise as we sing the doxology of praise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray in unison. Lord of all, we thank you this day for the opportunity to be together worshiping your name. Help us use these gifts and offerings to help our church share your love and forgiveness with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've got our, uh, we're celebrating our May uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Um, I believe, in fact, it's Gloria's birthday today. Is that right? Yeah, let's give her a big round of applause. We're so grateful that you made it, that you're here with us. Uh, we've also got other birthdays on the screen. Uh, I already think I missed a slide, but uh, we can see them there. Oh, we've got Don and Truman. We've got so many names up there. Um, if you have a birthday, would you please raise your hand this month? If you have a birthday this month, we're going to raise our hands and let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Happy birthday, happy birthday. We're so glad you're with us. And then we also have our anniversaries as well. Uh, we've got the Zambranos, uh, Ginger and Bruce Tappert, and uh, the Wal Walls? Oh. Uh, Chibuzo and RJ Walls. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So, um, happy anniversary to those as well. Let's give them a big round of applause. 
Uh, we also have um, some other announcements this morning. Um, we have our Monday Covenant group on Zoom. Um, this is at 7.30 p.m. If you're interested in being a part of a covenant group that uh, helps uh, hold each other accountable, that you kind of lift up what it means to be a, a Christian, what it means to love one another, uh, that's happening on Monday nights, uh, usually twice a month. That's tomorrow night. Tuesday, we've got What's in Your Hymnal uh, on Zoom as we learn more about the hymns and songs that we sing in worship. Uh, Wednesday, we've got our food distribution. We've got a big week. This is our back-to-back -back Wednesday, Thursday. So Wednesday, uh, we work with the food bank and we have food distribution. And we can always use help. I'm going to have Joyce raise her hand. If you would like to help, if you've never been there before, please see Joyce. She can find a place for you and we'd love to have you help out. Uh, it's a big day where we feed a lot of people from our neighborhood and uh, we're honored to do that. On Thursday, we've got our power hour at downtown and West Campus uh, with more food distribution and a packed house of worship uh, in our fellowship hall. And that's this Thursday as uh, every Thursday. And then Friday night, we've got our end of school year program at the preschool at five o'clock. Um, it's already that time or the schools are kind of wrapping up. And so we've got that this coming Friday. Uh, Blanket Brigade at the home of Diana Weichies is on uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. And then Saturday evening and afternoon, I should say, uh, is Messy Church at our East Campus. Um, so please bring your families and friends. Uh, we would love to have you for our Messy Church at East Campus at 4 o'clock. Uh, next Sunday is Pentecost. Uh, I wore my maroon a little early, but if you'd like to wear your red, uh, next week we recognize the movement of the Holy Spirit. It is the birthday of our church, as we like to celebrate. Uh, that's what we call it, the birthday. And uh, that is next Sunday. Um, we will be celebrating that here. We've got our Spanish Bible study. We've got worship at our West Campus at 11 a.m. as well. Um, one other announcement is that on May 30th, we have a, a special charge conference that was called. Um, that has to do with the changing of pastor salaries uh, coming in July. And so uh, that is for all of our general counsel, but that is just something that is happening. You can ask somebody on GCC. Uh, if, you, if you're on GCC, raise your hand. If you, could. if you have any questions about that, they will have more information, but it's a special charge conference happening May 30th at 7 p.m. Uh, that will also be held on Zoom, is my understanding. So um, something, yes. And we're going to get out of here early. My other Mother's Day present to all the mothers in the room is that we're going to be out early to get to brunch. So uh, we're, please stand as you are able. We are going to sing Lift Every Voice and Sing. This is hymn 519, and it will also be on the screen. Yes. Let, let me say first that those that are helping us with the screens, uh, we need to say thank you. They've done a lot of hard work, and we enjoy having these, these words on the screen going the way it needs it so that we can sing these songs without encumberment. So thanks, guys. Here we go. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty Let our rejoicing rise High as the listening skies Let it resound loud as the rolling sea Sing a song Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chasing rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. When there's ready beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers 
other side we have come over a way that with tears that watered we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out of the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast God of our weary God of our silent tears, Thou who hast Thou who hast by Thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Let our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee shadow beneath thy hand may we forever stand true to our God true to our God receive this blessing let us go from this place knowing that our God loves us forever and always help us go and be loved for this world that is in need seeking and searching for something anything and let us be the exception for those that are feeling like there is nothing left let us go now to love and serve the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs>